In today's video, we'll cover our first day exploring Istanbul. Having landed at Istanbul airport, we began our journey by taking the Hawaii bus to Aksaray. The airport is quite far away from the city, so we had a nice ride ahead of us. We stayed at Yuxel Yani Kapi, which is close to the historical part of the city and easily accessible by public transport. The rooms were well maintained and the service impeccable. Trams are undeniably the best way for travelers to explore Istanbul. We took the T1 tram line from Yusuf Pasha to Sultan Ahmed. Sultan Ahmed Square, also known as the Hippodrome of Constantinople, used to be the social center of the Byzantine Empire. These days, most of the tourist sites are situated around the periphery of this area. The massive structure of Hagia Sophia dominates the Istanbul skyline. Just on the opposite side of Hagia Sophia, one can see the Ottoman architectural marvel, the Blue Mosque, officially known as the Sultan Ahmed Mosque.
the Kulie or complex of Sultan Ahmed Mosque contains within it the tomb of Sultan Ahmed I. The colored tiles and the intricate artwork makes this building a beautiful jewel that is easily missed by the travelers. The Blue Mosque complex has wide open gardens which provides amazing view of its six pencil shaped minarets. As the site was under renovation, we had a quick visit and admired the beauty of the ethnic tiles and were on our way to Hagia Sophia. Upon arrival, we noticed the long line where we had to queue up. While waiting, one can enjoy the hot Turkish bagels known as semit, corn and cob or roasted chestnuts. The gigantic proportions of Hagia Sophia becomes apparent at the entrance to the site. The remains of Church of Theodosius II, which existed at the current site before Hagia Sophia, can be seen at the entrance. Entering the building, one can see the orders of Sultan Mehmed enjoying the mosque. The Exonathex contains the sarcophagus of Empress Irene. The 
building retains its mosaics from the Byzantine era. Upon entering the main hall, one can see the huge expanse of space underneath the central dome. The warm undertone of the lights makes one admire the pillars, windows and arches surrounding oneself. Italian, a marble section of the floor was used to crown the Byzantine emperors. In the vestibule mosaic, one can see Justinian, Christ, Mary and Constantine. Walking along, one can encounter multiple similar stalls. As we walked through the Hippodrome, we came across the German fountain, which was constructed by the German government to mark the visit of the German Emperor Wilhelm II to Istanbul in 1898.
Theodosius the Great brought a obelisk from Egypt and erected it inside the racing track. Carved from pengranite, it was originally erected at the Temple of Karnak in Luxor during the reign of Tutmosis III. pedestal had bas reliefs dating to the time of the obelisk's re-erection in Constantinople. To raise the image of his new capital, Constantine brought works of art from all over the empire to adorn it. Among these was the sacrificial tripod of Plataea, now known as the Serpent's Column, cast to celebrate the victory of the Greeks over the Persians. Constantine ordered a tripod to be moved from the Temple of Apollo at Delphi and set in the middle of the Hippodrome. Emperor Constantine VII built another obelisk at the other end of the Hippodrome. It was originally covered with gilded bronze plaques, but only the stone core of this monument survives, known as the Walled Obelisk. Walking back to the hotel, we came across several baklava shops and even glimpsed past the burnt column. We went to Hafiz Mustafa, one of the finest shops for baklava and Turkish delight. There we tried the pistachio baklava along with cream as well as some really strong Turkish coffee. The freshly made konafa was really crisp when served hot. Stay tuned for the rest of our videos exploring Turkey. Keep traveling with us and keep on exploring.